Hello friends, today we are going to watch the 2005 adventure fantasy movie named King Kong, directed by Peter Jackson, starring Naomi Watts, Jack Black, Adrian Brody, Thomas Kretschmann, and many more. After all of his movies are screwed up, a director endeavors to escape from the producers. If he wants to come back to the field, he has to make a wonderful film and win everyone's praise. So one day, he made a team and boarded the ship to shoot the film. He planned to make a film during the journey, but what happened was something that was never expected. The ship lost its direction and landed on an island. A terrifying creature waits for them there. King Kong, released in 2005, is a movie that gave the audience a better visualization. Without any further ado, let's see what happens in the movie. The movie starts by showing a circus show. Anne, our heroine, has been working on that show for a long time. So after the show that day, in the middle of washing off all the makeup, those who were with her saw a book in front of her. It was scriptwriter Driscoll's book. She was a big fan of Driscoll's. She wished to work with Driscoll one day. So that night, after the show, she goes out with her friend, who is old. When they came back the next morning to perform the show, they see the owners have been throwing out all of their stuff outside for not paying the rent. The old man who was with Anne started to tell her that there was no point in staying there any longer. Then in the next scene, Anne is approaching some guy to get a chance to act in a play. He tried to avoid her as much as possible, but seeing that she was not going, he handed her a card. The next scene shows the director Carl. He is showing the visuals he has shot so far to the producers, but the producers are all bored and sleepy. The producer asked him, is this what you made? Realizing that the matter had gotten out of hand, Carl said no. The story has been completely changed. The rest of the shooting is going to take place on an island. When Carl says the ship is ready to go there, the producers send him out of the room. Carl hears their conversation going on from outside. Look, he may have been a great director in the past, but now he is just a dumb. They say, so let's stop the shooting and make the decision to recover the money from him. Carl suddenly runs away from there, realizing that the shooting will not take place. He escaped from the hands of the producers, who were following him and got into a car. He plans to get the team to start the shoot. But then there is another problem. None of the heroines are ready. Carl suggested many people but they all had busy schedules. Carl goes from there to find a heroine and tells his associate to prepare the script. So when he was searching for the actress, he saw Anne standing there with a card in her hand. She throws away the card and steals fruit from a nearby shop, but the shopkeeper caught her. Carl came there and settled it by giving them money. While she was eating her food, Carl said that Anne had a role in his movie. She initially declined, but when she heard the scriptwriter was crisper, she accepted the offer. When Anne and Carl reached the ship, Carl realized something. The producers have filed a case with the police. Carl's assistant told him confidentially, the police will be here as soon as possible. Carl immediately calls the ship's captain and tells him to take the ship now. His reply was, no paperwork has been completed. Carl pulled the captain aside, saying, I'll give you a few more dollars. In the next scene, Carl goes inside the ship. As soon as Carl arrived, Driscoll handed him the script and was about to walk out. Carl said, there are only 15 pages. I want a full-length script but Driscoll says, let's do it later. Driscoll seems quite busy. Carl calls him back to give his payment and keeps him there as much as possible. When he was about to leave, the ship had been taken from the shore. When Driscoll was looking for a place to sleep, just then, he saw a bottle of chloroform, which got hidden by his hands and started rolling down. Many bottles of chloroform were lined up in that area. Then the next day, inside the ship, a small boy came near Driscoll to give him food. His name is Jimmy. He stole Driscoll's pen by that time. That's when a man named Harris comes there. Jimmy is the adopted son of Harris. Harris takes the pen from Jimmy's hand and gives it to Driscoll and apologizes. In the next scene, Anne is excited to meet Driscoll. Then she went straight to Carl and introduced her to each of the crew members. Meanwhile, she started talking to someone, thinking it was Driscoll. He immediately came in front of her and smiled. Anne is shocked to see Driscoll. At the same time, the hero in Carl's movie is shown. Someone has painted a mustache in his photo, which was in his room. At first, Hero is angry but he likes the photo with a mustache later when he sees it. In the next scene, Driscoll writes the script as per Carl's view. Carl talks about an island. Immediately, Driscoll looked at him in shock and said, an island? Driscoll asked. You said earlier that you were going to shoot this film in Singapore. Carl tells Driscoll that no one knew about this. He tells him that we are going to Skull Island. It is an unknown island, and the rest of the scenes for the movie will be shot there. Jimmy heard all their plans. In the next scene, they are filming a scene of the hero and heroine Bruce and Anne on the ship. Meanwhile, 
Carl saw Jimmy whispering something in Harris's ear. In the next scene, Driscoll and Anne are talking to each other. Driscoll has a crush on Anne and gets close to her. Then the film is shown shooting again. Carl says cut when Anne is staring at Driscoll while filming the scene. In the next scene, Harris and Jimmy went straight to Carl. Almost everything has been told to Harris by Jimmy. So Hayes asked Carl. So we're going to Singapore, aren't we? Carl says that we are going to Skull Island. Immediately, Harris told him that the island lies beyond the sea. A huge ancient wall has been built there. If we go there, we will never come back, said Harris. Carl says that I have heard many such stories. One day, Anne went to see Driscoll. She picked up a book that Driscoll was writing. When she said, it's a stage comedy Driscoll told her. I wrote it for you. When she asks, why are you writing for me? Driscoll says, don't you know that? And kisses her. The captain received a message. As soon as the captain sees the message, he changes the ship's direction. Immediately, Carl came running there and asked, why did you change the direction? The captain said that there was an arrest warrant against Carl. The captain said that no matter how much money you give, he couldn't do anything to save him. Meanwhile, another problem arises. The direction of the ship began to change automatically. It was then that Driscoll showed Carl a map of the place where they were standing. He was surprised to see it. It was near an island. The ship went out of control and got stuck between some rocks. Carl and his crew members came out and saw something amazing. A huge wall was seen in front of them. Carl realizes that they are now on Skull Island. On the same island, they believed that there was some monstrous creature behind the wall. The captain is repairing the broken ship. Jimmy took him upstairs. When he reached there, he saw Carl and a few others going to the island in a small boat. Carl captures the visuals on his camera. They cross the island and saw human skulls lying all over there. Anne felt scared after seeing all that. They saw that ancient wall when they moved a little further. They passed that and walked inside. A tribal girl suddenly appeared in front of them and looked at them strangely. Let's go back and urged. But Carl replied, I'll deal with this, and took a chocolate and headed towards her. She bit Carl's hand and ran off when he was about to give her the chocolate. Carl noticed older tribes there at that time. After adding, don't be scared, these are only old folks and children an arrow appeared from behind and struck Mike's chest. And began to scream and weep when she witnessed it. The latter is also heard on the ship. Following that, a group of tribes landed on the location where Carl and the others were gathered and began attacking them. Some members of their group have died. The captain and his men appeared with weapons to rescue them. They are wiping out the tribes one by one. However, the captain and his crew rescued them from the tribes. They are all ready to head back to the ship in the next scene. However, the ship's hull is hit on the shore. Only by minimizing the ship's load, it will be able to float. They began dropping all of the ship's hefty goods into the sea. Carl is drunk inside the ship and says that we must complete this movie in memory of our departed Mike. He says we should contribute a part of the earnings to his family. A couple of the savages leaped up to the ship and boarded without being observed. Driscoll spotted a necklace and realized that the savages had boarded the ship. He dashed over to Anne. By then, the ship had begun to move. Driscoll arrives at Anne's room and discovers her absence. He quickly went to the captain and informed him of the situation. At the same time, the savages brought Anne to the island, where they were making ritualistic noises and dedicating her to someone. They're making noise and yelling Kong Kong soon afterwards. Forward. A gang arrives on the island to rescue Anne, carrying all the weapons from the ship with them. The savages put the big necklace around her neck and took her over the big wall. From beyond the wall, a large creature is coming through the forest. At the same time, the people on the ship had reached there. Seeing the big Kong, Anne started screaming. Driscoll came in the direction where he heard the noise and saw a large monkey holding Anne in his arms. Carl went there after hearing the sound and saw the same sight. He looked back at Carl and took Anne in his arms and ran into the forest to hide. Then they take the gun and go over the wall to save Anne. Hare stopped Jimmy who wanted to go with him. You and a few others go back to the ship and wait. He sent Jimmy away. So when they got inside the wall, a giant antelope rushed towards them, which was four times its size. They scattered in all directions and started running. When it came forward to hurt Driscoll, Hare shot it down. At the same time, Kong is holding Anne in his hand. Anne picked up a bone and stabbed Kong in the arm, jumping down and escaping. But no matter how much she ran, she could not escape from Kong's hand. At the same time, Driscoll and his team arrived there in search of Anne. Seeing them coming, Kong ran forward, taking Anne in his arms again. Meanwhile, Harris notices something. Jimmy had gone down with them. Jimmy started to say just as Harris was about to stop him. I also want to help bring her back. Harris said, don't make me regret taking you with me and walked forward. After a short walk, everyone is sitting down to rest. If it is Carl, 
He is going to call his cameraman and shoot everywhere. He has captured on camera all the animals and places that have ever existed. That's when Driscoll saw Kong's big footprint there. Is this the creature that took Anne? How tall is this? Hares asked. I didn't see it. Carl has seen. Ask him was Driscoll's reply. But Carl had already gone somewhere for shooting. The earth trembled and giant dinosaurs approached Driscoll and his friends. Many people were crushed between their legs. The rest climbed upwards and escaped through it. Carl's cameraman couldn't escape. The cameraman is being dragged away by a dinosaur right in front of Carl. In the meantime, Kong is trying to awaken Anne who is in a coma. However, she does not get up. In the aftermath of escaping the dinosaurs, Driscoll and his team feel exhausted. Several members of the group had died. Carl's passion for cinema was unstoppable even then. In memory of the deceased, I will complete this film on behalf of their families, he promises. Meanwhile, Bruce returned to the ship. As Driscoll teased him, I didn't know you were such a coward as a movie hero. Heroism has nothing to do with this. She is a good child. But there's no point in risking my life for her says Bruce and leaves. A few others went back with him at the same time and slowly woke up from his slumber and attempted to escape from Kong's hand by gouging his eyes. But Kong saw it and grabbed her again. She then shows Kong her circus tricks to make him look cool. He doesn't like it at all, but he liked something else. He was amused to see her falling and getting up. For that, he started pushing her down again. After doing this two or three times, Anne got angry and yelled at Kong's face. Seeing this, he also got angry and started hitting rocks and breaking them and uprooting trees and throwing them down. Then Kong went from there to another place. Seeing that, Anne started to run away. At the same time, Driscoll and his friends are paddling down the river in a canoe-like thing. Just then, something from the water started attacking them. When they started beating it, they retreated as if they were afraid of something. Then what came there was a big aquatic creature. It came and overturned the boat they were in. Then the creature started eating the fallen people. Driscoll is also underwater. Somehow, Driscoll managed to escape from the creature. All the while, Carl was telling the assistant to don't drop the camera. As soon as he somehow got out of the water and got ashore, the first thing Carl looked for was to see if something had happened to the camera. While rolling with the camera on, one of the groups was bitten by the creature. Didn't you shoot that too? Asked another scornfully. So they started walking forward from there and reached in front of a big cave. They realized that the creature is inside. Harris told Jimmy get out of here. After Harris started shooting into the cave, Kong came out and took him in his arms. Harris started shooting at Kong, and Kong threw Harris' heart against a rock. Hitting the rock, Harris fell into the mountain. Jimmy is crying after seeing this. Kong is then looking to knock the rest of the people down from there. Hearing all these noises, Anne is running to reach them. That's when she got trapped in front of a dinosaur. She started running to escape from its grasp. She ran straight into a cave. Right behind her was the dinosaur. In the meantime, inside the cave, the giant spiders crawled through Anne's body. She immediately got out and ran. When he came out, he saw another 10 times sized dinosaur biting the previous dinosaur in its mouth. She started running from there without any other option. She saw something else when she was hiding out of sight. Likewise, another dinosaur was right next to her. As it also started to attack, and started to fall from above the mountain, that's when Kong came there. He held Anne in one hand and started fighting with the three dinosaurs. All of them were pushed into the mountain by Kong. But when the last dinosaur fell, Kong was also grabbed and dragged down. They are lying around the vines after falling into the pit. Then the fight was hanging on the vines. In the meantime, when the dinosaur ran towards Anne, who had fallen, Kong jumped down from above. Its scars can be seen on his face and body. Then he kills this dinosaur by hitting it and splitting its mouth in two. Kong clings to Anne like a little child after killing the dinosaur. Kong takes her on his shoulder and started walking. The next scene shows Driscoll and the rest being pushed down by Kong to the cave. They woke up from their slumber. Jimmy is still crying over Hera's lying dead body on the floor. Carl is looking at his broken camera lying on the ground and is angry as if he has lost everything. That's when giant spiders and ants come to attack them. They immediately began to deal with it. Jimmy takes out his gun and shoots them down. Now, all that's left is Driscoll, Carl, and Jimmy. Many animals are coming towards them. That's when Bruce, who went back to the ship earlier, and the captain came with guns and started shooting the animals. They came down with a rope and started to lift them. Taking one last look at Hares, Jimmy took Hares' hat and climbed up. Carl, who has lost everything, went crazy. The next scene shows Kong. He is sitting at heights with Anne. He turns away when Anne looks at his face. Immediately, she tries to cool Kong down. 
by showing off her circus skills again, and slowly climbed into his arms and sat up. At the same time, Driscoll, who came out from the cave, looked for Anne again. The rest are going to the ship through the other side. Driscoll, there is no need to go. She won't be alive told the captain. She will be alive. She was kidnapped by Kong. Don't you have some chloroform in your hand? Use it to sedate Kong and save Anne said Carl to the captain. Isn't your plan to stun it and take it away from here? Asked captain with a smile. The captain knew that Carl had no desire to save Anne. Hearing nothing of this. Driscoll went into the forest alone, in search of Anne. When he reached the top by holding on to the rocks, he saw Kong sleeping. Anne is also sleeping in Kong's arms. Anne woke up suddenly and found Driscoll standing in front of her. Suddenly some bats came out of nowhere and attacked Kong. Seeing that, Driscoll grabbed her and began to descend. After swimming in, they quickly reached the big wall and started calling out. They can get there only if they lower the bridge from the other side. The bridge lowered and Anne and Driscoll reached the other side of the wall. That's when Anne realizes the real intentions of the people there. Bottles of chloroform and ropes with hooks are ready to catch Kong. By then Kong had broken down the door and reached them. Immediately they took the rope tied to the hook and threw it at Kong. Anne was crying and saying no don't anything but they didn't listen. They took the bottle of chloroform and threw it at him, pushing it all away. He walks towards Anne. Anne has gone ahead in a canoe. Kong took the canoe behind him and threw it away. At the same time, Carl took out a large bottle of chloroform and threw it at Kong's face. He slowly began to lose consciousness. Kong straightened his arm, looked at Anne, and slowly dozed off. The next scene took place in a town. There, Carl puts on a show featuring Kong. People flock to watch the show. Carl has now become a huge celebrity with the show. Old producers come and join him. At the same time, Driscoll was watching a comedy. As if he suddenly remembered something. He got up and went to another place. He went straight to where the Kong show was taking place. There Kong is on display for the audience. Moreover, Carl introduces Bruce to the people as the one who saved the girl from Kong. The same Bruce who got scared and went back to the ship. Later, a girl is brought to the stage dressed as Anne for the show. Thinking it was Anne, Kong called her out. But when he saw her face and realized it wasn't Anne, Kong became violent. Where's Anne? Driscoll asked his companion. His reply was, despite what we offered, she didn't come to do this show. At the same time, Anne is doing another show. Kong also gets very violent. Seeing this, Driscoll told the crowd to get out of there as soon as possible. But they were engrossed in this show. No one wanted to come out. It was then that Kong broke the chains that bound him and threw him. Picking up the woman in front of him and looking him in the face, he threw her away. When he realized it wasn't Anne, then he went down to the audience. People are running around in panic. Meanwhile, Kong saw Driscoll there. Immediately Kong started running after Driscoll. Then Kong goes straight down the road. He got down on the road and started hitting all the cars. Each woman is taken and checked to see if it is Anne. At the same time, Anne has come out of the show after hearing the commotion. Seeing a lot of military vehicles hurrying somewhere. She realized the point and started running straight to the place where the Kong show was taking place. Driscoll gets in front of Kong in a car to stop him from wrecking the cars, drawing his attention to himself. Immediately, Kong started running after Driscoll's car to catch up with him. He smashed his car with one punch. Driscoll is lying unconscious in the car. That's when Kong looked back. Anne was slowly coming towards him. She slowly touched Kong's hands. They went straight to the park. There Kong is playing fetch game with Anne. When they were playing without disturbing anyone, the military came there and started firing. Kong takes Anne and starts running from there. They ran over the building and reached the tallest building in the city. Kong climbed to the top of it with Anne. Then they spend time there till dawn. As soon as it became dawn, military planes came there and started shooting at them. Kong took Anne to a safe place and climbed to the top of the building. He gets shot a lot while climbing. His body is bleeding from the bullet shots. The military is still firing incessantly. In his anger, he crashes a plane that comes close. In the meantime, Anne started falling. Kong immediately grabbed her and put her safely inside the building. Then he climbed up and took hold of a plane with his hand and threw it with a whirl. Meanwhile, Driscoll has reached the bottom of the building. Ignoring the objections of the occupants, he enters the building. At the same time, Anne climbed up the corner again and looked at Kong. Incapacitated by the gunshot, Kong is looking at her helplessly. She quickly walked up to him and stood in front of him. Then she signaled to the military not to fire. But they don't see it. They started shooting Kong again from behind. Exhausted by the gunfire, Kong fell from the building. Anne bursts into tears when she sees it. That's when Driscoll came up. Seeing him, Anne ran and hugged him and started crying. Crying. At the same time, 
people below were rushing to take pictures of the dead Kong. Carl is also standing there, no matter how big the animal was, wasn't it shot down by just those military planes? Carl heard someone there say. He immediately answered him, it was not military planes that brought down this beast, it was the profound beauty of a woman that brought him down. Along with Carl's dialogue, the film ends with a scene showing Kong, the king of Skull Island, lying motionless in the middle of New York City. We hope you all enjoyed the video, let us know in the comments down below as we would love to discuss it with you all. Thank you all for tuning in, and we'll back soon with another video, until then goodbye.